For quite some time, the Malawi economy has been faced with a number of challenges characterized by, among other things, the ever-rising inflation, which has led to an increase in commodity prices and a surge in cost of living. What needs to be done? For an answer on this and so many other questions, I'm joined by the Reserve Bank of Malawi Governor, Dr. Wuson Banda, with whom we want to discuss the monetary side of the equation and also how the central bank is deploying efforts towards containing some of the challenges the local economy has been facing. My name is William Mwende. Let me welcome you to the Reserve Bank of Malawi, Lilongwe. Mm -hmm. Firstly, we are speaking at a time when the headline inflation has remained stubbornly high, uh, seen at about 33.4%. And this is despite the central bank deploying so many other efforts, one of which was the adoption of what we call the tight monetary policy stance to contain the pressures that have been brought about by the rising inflation. But there seem not to be the desired results. What is your take on, on the results that this has brought about this far? Uh, I would look at it uh, differently. I think uh, I would like to agree with you uh, first and foremost uh, that uh, inflation has been very high in, re in the recent past, very much elevated. The um, reason is that uh, uh, from both the supply side as well as on demand side, we saw pressures. On the supply side, we are really looking at uh, um, issues in the real sector, and here we are talking of maize in particular. There's been a shortage of maize in some parts of the country, and that has really, really contributed to to the rise in in, in, in the CP, the CPI, which is consumer price index. Um, with the coming in of all these initiatives uh, that the government has put in place, uh, distributing maize uh, to the affected areas and the like, we think that is going to uh, to deal with the issues of supply side. Uh, constraints and and, uh, and it will have a positive impact on bringing down inflation from the supply side. Uh, on the demand side, obviously, things like money supply have been extremely high, and uh, money supply has really been driven by so many factors in in the economy. And uh, we have maintained a very tight monetary policy, and we, we continuously uh, tighten a monetary policy in order to arrest that uh, uh, increase in the money supply. Uh, thank God, in in the past month or so, we we are now seeing uh, inflation taking a downward turn. Um, we know that inflation has come down by two percentage points from a high of 34 percent in the, in the recent past. We are now around 32 percent, and we expect that to go down even further. Um, obviously, the, uh, we are benefiting from what we call base base effects. That is the level of inflation last year. This time was was fairly high. So against it this year, that level is kind of uh, moderated. So we believe that those base effects will best, uh, now have kicked in, and we expect that uh, uh, through the rest of the year and early next year, we expect that inflation will be coming down, and we uh, and we hope that by the close of the first quarter of next year. With the coming in of harvest and the like, rains have been good so far. We expect that that will also reinforce uh, that downward adjustment in in prices. So, from both the supply side as well as the, on the demand side, we, we we are seeing some positive uh, developments, and we think that uh, a combination of those two will definitely lead to an improvement. In inflation. An extension would be what commentators have been saying. Uh, while the monetary authorities are deploying the necessary efforts towards containing these pressures, uh, on the other end, the fiscal space, uh, there are some challenges characterized by the uh, of expenditure, for instance, and continued borrowing on the government side, especially on the domestic front. Uh, what is your take on this? And on the fiscal side, we have a program with the IMF, and that program basically uh, um, uh, speaks to Fiscal consolidation. Fiscal consolidation is where government expenditures are brought in line with the resources available. Um, so what is, what government is doing in the context of that agreement and in, in the context of the ECF is to ensure that uh, it moves towards a situation where excessive borrowing is contained and all those things are contained. We believe that uh, 
um, on the fiscal side that is being achieved. And for as long as we remain within the ECF, those targets are going to be to be achieved. So we believe that that is going to be, to be contained. So I'm not, I don't have that much concern on the fiscal side. Um, we should all be mindful of the fact that we are coming from a very difficult period. We have had so many shocks. And the most recent shock, obviously, is to do with the El Ninos and the like where government has had to, to spend uh, quite a lot of resources outside the, the, what was initially budgeted for. Now, explain other mechanisms that the central bank is deploying towards arresting inflation, because we are speaking at a time when uh, the rising inflation has had a, a huge impact on the cost of uh, living in the country whereby commodity prices continue to rocket. What is it that uh, the central bank is doing towards addressing this challenge? Yeah, again, I want to go back to the, to, to the point I made earlier on. Um, on, the, on the monetary policy side, monetary authority side, we have tightened monetary policy and we continue holding a very tight stance. Uh, that is a combination of uh, the policy rate will remain high. We've also been very proactive in using what we call the liquidity reserve requirement uh -huh. on domestic uh, deposits. Uh, the, the, the LRR on domestic deposits essentially arrests the amount of uh, cash that the banks can deploy uh -huh. to lend and all that stuff. And so that would uh, have a direct impact on, on growth in money supply, which is good the direct impact on, on inflation. So, from the central bank side, a tight monetary policy is required, but we need a supportive fiscal policy. And I'm saying my hopes lie in fiscal consolidation and that, that I referred to earlier on. For as long as the government sticks to um, the program that we agreed with the IMF and the, we are implementing it, I don't see any problem in containing inflation, certainly in the short to medium term. Uh -huh. But it's, it's, it's been rough so far, but uh, in my view, I think uh, we are about uh, out, well, almost out of uh, that uh, rough patch. Okay. Uh, most of the things have been uh, done, most of the things have been corrected. Another area of interest is the uh, exchange rate regime. We've noted how volatile the kwacha has remained for quite some time now. Uh, what explanation does the central bank have on the instability, I'll use that word, of the local currency, the kwacha, in recent past? A, a couple of issues. Uh, in the short term, obviously, the, the very same issues we're talking about, about the, the high growth in money supply, that too has got an impact on the exchange rate. For as long as you've got lots of money in circulation, uh, it will chase both the domestically produced goods and services as well as externally sourced goods and services. Uh -huh. So if you've got uh, uncontrolled growth in money supply, it definitely is going to affect your exchange rate. Uh -huh. So our, our strategy really has been to contain inflation. By containing inflation, we're also containing uh, pressures on the exchange rate. So in the short term, that, uh, that strategy is, is is uh, is viable, but we we are also mindful of the fact that uh, we need to uh, to increase the supply of foreign currency in the market. Um, clearly, from the supply side, which is exports essentially, um, and if exports are not uh, strong enough, we do depend on donor inflows. For donors, we need a program with the IMF right now. In the ECF program does provide uh, uh, that support. It's a catalyst for other donors to, to come in. Uh, the, typically, the IMF uh, as an institution will not give us a lot of money, but a program with them will basically send out a signal to other uh, uh, donors to come in. In the recent past, we have seen the, the ADB coming in. We have seen the EU coming in with the uh, budget support, which I believe that is, uh, that is positive. We have seen uh, the World Bank coming in strongly. So the support from all these development partners in the short term, in the short term, will provide the liquidity that we need to support the, the market. But in the medium to longer term, the country has to produce. We need to have a sustainable supply of foreign currency. Our 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 exports vis-a-vis -vis our imports, 
there's a huge mismatch. Uh, on average, our um, uh, our exports amount to something slight over a billion a year. Everything taken into account. Whereas our imports go up to as high as three billion. So there is, in any given year, a gap of about two billion uh, 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 dollars in 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 our balance of payments that needs to be to be financed. That is unsustainable. In 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 the past, what has happened to to close that gap? We we have depended on donor on donors coming in. We have also borrowed money from regional and international banks, but we cannot do that indefinitely. So a longer term solution to our balance of payments problems is really for the country to go back to basics, and the basics imply producing. Production has to be uh, increased for for exports. We also need to look into import substitution. I know we have made a lot of noise about exports, 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 but we also need to look at import substitution. We should not be importing everything uh, that can also be uh, produced internally. Um, in Malawi has got a lot of capacity, but we are not using that capacity to produce things which we are currently uh, importing. We can have a very strong import substitution drive, and that uh, is going to, to, to help us. So, so to answer your question, in the short term, obviously, we need to term growth in money supply, but we also need to look at short term interventions by way of uh, getting donor money to come in and wherever we can get lines of, of credit, etc. etc. Um, the, the country can, can, can use those. As a central bank, obviously, we are not into into commercial borrowing anymore because of all the restrictions restrictions within within the program with the IMF. But uh, the the rest of the private sector can do that. So uh, the private sector has got uh, an opportunity here to basically bring in foreign currency by way of getting lines of credit, getting LCs, it is, it is established with international, international banks. That in the short term is going to, to contain our problem. In the, in the medium to longer term, I've mentioned issues of increasing production of exports and increasing production in import substitution. To address the problem, uh, one of the uh, efforts that, or one of the instruments that the, the, the Reserve Bank used was in November last year to devalue the local currency by about 44%, uh, which has had, of course, uh, an impact on so many uh, Malawians. But at that time, I remember quoting you saying that the idea, the idea was to bring about the realignment on the, on the market. A year down the line, has this move of devaluing the local currency brought about the desired impact, or has it met the uh, intended objective? Forty-four uh, percent was huge, and the, the impact on the economy was huge. It did achieve uh, some some desired impact. And clearly, if people were not excited about it. It created a lot of pain. But if we had left the exchange rate and adjusted and attended to at that time, that, that level of misalignment would have, be, would have created chaos by now. It was a very painful decision we took, but we had to take it. Um, one year down the line, what are we saying? I'm, I'm saying to, 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 to myself, yes, we did the right thing at the right time. We are living in a dynamic world. Things are moving. These are moving pieces. Uh, clearly, we have had shocks in between, um, and, and clearly we are seeing pressures um, uh, right now. But we are asking ourselves, should we do another one or not? Clearly, our numbers pointed to the fact that uh, we don't need to do anything right now. I've, I've mentioned this before, and I keep on emphasizing. Uh, when, we, um, uh, when we engage with our development partners, we look at the numbers and the like, we have all agreed that uh, a combination of the two devaluations we did uh, last year and the year before have uh, cumulatively uh, it resulted in a depreciation of 120 percent. That is massive. That is huge. Um, so we really need to move back and look at other things. Otherwise, we just be creating pain unnecessarily. Obviously, we are not uh, uh, turning a blind eye. 
will be watching. But uh, for now, we don't think that is uh, that is necessary. Uh, so that's why I mentioned uh, uh, in my earlier comment that we need to be focusing on other things. We need to grow our exports. We need to look at import substitution. But for now, the sales rate is not it's not an issue for us. But we are talking at a time when uh, the spread uh, between of the rates between the uh, authorized dealer banks or the official rates compared to what is happening on the parallel market or the black market remains uh, way too wide. Uh, is there a remedy, or should we say uh, we are continuing to chase a black cat in in a dark room? Uh, a, a couple of things. Uh, um, for us, what would be important are the rates that are in the formal institutions, commercial banks, to a less extent foreign currency bureaus, right? We do not track and we do not follow rates in the black market. We know that uh, there's a lot of speculation which is going on and uh, and uh, if we were to, to follow those, we would really be moving the same rate on account of uh, speculation, right? So um, if you look at the volume of uh, transactions that are taking place in those areas, in the that we just referred to, compared to what is taking place in the formal center, we are moving a lot of money, a lot more money in the formal center than in the formal center. So for us, what would be important are the rates in the formal markets, that is commercial banks, licensed foreign currency institutions and the like, and not uh, the unlicensed one, because we believe that there's a lot of speculation which is taking place there. Mm -hmm. Because if, if you are going to really go in that direction, it will be like chasing a shadow. You will not catch it. You move to, to, to 250 today, uh, the, 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 that rate will move to 300, uh, to 3,000. You move to 3,000, it will be 4,000. So you'll be chasing a shadow, and it's endless. We need to contain domestic prices. We need to make sure that uh, with a stable exchange rate, that provides an anchor for stability in domestic prices. Uh -huh. But if we continuously chase the rates which are out there, it will create chaos. It will create uh, instability in domestic uh, uh, prices. Now, talking of the International Monetary Fund Extended Credit Facilitator Program, in November there was happiness all over when Malawi uh, had in place a new ECF program. And months down the line, there's been what I would call deafening silence, except for the one once of disbursement that was made uh, immediately after the coming in of the IMF in the equation or so, we noted uh, other entities, other government partners coming in with direct budget support. But thenceforth, uh, there hasn't been conversation regarding the uh, extended credit facility in the public domain. What is happening? Is there any progress in regards to the extended credit facility program? Um, well, as I said in my opening remarks, the IMF doesn't give us a lot of money per se. Oh. They don't. They gave us, I think, initially it was maybe 34 million or thereabouts. We expected to get another lot when we conclude what we call the first review. We're now working on concluding the first review of the ECF. Uh -huh. uh, between, between the first quarter and now, we've been engaging with the fund on, on, uh, on negotiating and concluding discussions around the first review. So we're working uh -huh. on concluding the first review of this year. This is what has really taken time. Um, in, the, uh, in the intervening period, um, we have seen the EU has come in, the given necessary money, ADB has come in. Uh, in the intervening period, we have also had some discussions with the others that we owe money to. Um, you know, we're also in a debt restructuring um, uh, exercise with the various uh, um, uh, creditors, uh, institutions that are both regional as well as international. So we were in those discussions. I believe that uh, since the, the ECF came on stream last year, we have achieved a lot. Um, the, the only problem is that we cannot be um, announcing these discussions, these uh, movements on a day-to-day -day basis. But definitely the fact that we're still talking to the IMF, that the donors are still on the ground with us, 
to me that is very positive when should we expect uh, the conclusion of the first review and of course what would be the the, the, the foreseen outcome possibly uh, from from your end we um, yeah I, I mean, we are we're, we're in those terminal discussions with the IMF right now we expect that uh, uh, the terminal discussions should be done by the end of the year, which is December, okay. and that they will go to the airport sometime in January. That is our expectation. That is what we would want to see happen. Obviously, the, the, these are negotiations. We're, we're discussing moving issues here. This is a dynamic environment in which we, we are. So we're still engaging with the fund. They're still looking at our books. And, uh, and we hope to that by the, by the time we get to Christmas, would have concluded the discussion with them. I'm hopeful. I'm I'm I'm, I'm really optimistic that we are going to conclude the first review come January, and then we will move on to the second uh, to the second phase of the program. Lastly, when all is said and done, we can at least agree that there are still some challenges on the domestic front needing admit attention. One question that I have for you as we conclude the program, Governor, is. What does the future hold? Uh, coming from the Central Bank, I would like to say we have gone through a very difficult period. Things are still tough on the ground, but I'm hopeful that uh, the future is going to, to, to be brighter. Um, uh, I'm saying this on the, on, on the basis of the following. Our, our technical people have come back with the projections for GDP for next year. Currently, our GDP growth for 2024 is at 1.8%. From 2025 going forward, it's about 4%. They're looking at growth in, in, the, uh, in the economy. The, the economy is, is going to grow. Um, uh, rains are, pro are projected or forecasted to, to be uh, better in 2024 going forward than has been the case in the past year. So it's strong rains. Uh, strong output. We expect uh, uh, that uh, uh, the government policy uh, combination of uh, ATM, agriculture, tourism, mining, and the like will kick in. Uh, that those uh, policies, those programs are going to anchor growth in the economy. So that should support the growth in the economy of 4.4 percent uh, going forward. And for as long as we also remain in the program with the IMF, we think that confidence out there, donor confidence, is going to be reinforced. We expect that our relationship with international banks, banks and, in, and the regional banks is going to, to grow stronger. We have come uh, from a very difficult period. Things can only get better. Thank you so very much once again, Governor, for giving us your uh, time and for uh, the conversations over the uh, situation in the country. Thanks very much. Thanks yeah. for coming to the bank. Sure. Thank yeah. You. Thank you so very Thank much. You. Bye -bye. Sure. Bye. On that note, we've also come to the end of this special interview where I was engaging the Reserve Bank Governor, Dr. Wilson Banda, on the economic situation currently and what does the future hold. On behalf of the entire production team, my name is William Gumembe. Thank you for watching and bye for now. This Saturday and every Saturday, tune in to Times Exclusive, where award-winning Brian Banda asks hard-hitting questions on your behalf. <laughs> what do you optimistic 2025 move in? We see ourselves as navigators developing an FS2. And if we give our course, we're setting the horizon of clean. Today and every Saturday, tune in to Times Exclusive, where award winning Brian Bunda asks hard hitting questions on your behalf. <laughs> Yo me nena falida mucho en